Welcome to Indiana. So we started in Iowa and in Illinois. Now we're in three states, all I names. Crossing border, entering Indiana. Thank you, Sam. So we're here at the Jayco Service Center in Middlebury, Indiana. Just watching that beautiful sunset. Straight west of us almost. Well, hey everybody. We overnighted traversing Nebraska at the, at the Seward, Nebraska Walmart. So guess what? We get to add Nebraska to our sticker map. So let's get her done. Nebraska's finally going on. It's funny because we've had a lot of people mention, well, you've never been through Nebraska? And Angie and I have been through Nebraska many times, traveling back and forth from Chicago, but we never RV'd in Nebraska. And again, this map represents places that we have been RVing. So we're down to Oklahoma, Delaware, Hawaii, in Alaska. Did you scrub those tires, Ange? I did. You scrubbed the tires. Well, that's a shame. Tom just did a video on some great spray and wipe stuff. Well, they're ready for that now. Well, so we need to pick some of that up. Then then you wouldn't have to scrub the rims. Yes, you, do. you have to get the dirt off. No, no, you just, I watched Tom's video, you just spray it on and, and wipe it off, and it makes the rims look fantastic. Okay. So, for anybody interested in that, go check out Tom's video. I'll put a link in the description below. Maybe put a link above, too. Looked like a good product, but we don't have that product right now, so Angie's out here doing the manual labor thing. Making the trailer sparkle again, right, baby? Oh my gosh, it's so bad. Yeah. Well, everybody, we uh, came over here to the Essenhaus, which is a what would you? I mean, it's a it's a Amish buffet, Amish store, restaurant, restaurant, convention hall, wedding center, bakery. Pretty crazy. There was a, a sign in there talking about just how much food they go through. They they go through five thousand pounds of ice a day here. That's just amazing. And there's a little village with some several different Amish stores, including the quilt store, which I was going to film in, but was immediately set upon by a very nice but firm lady who explained that they didn't have the artist's releases for us to showcase the quilts inside. Which is interesting yeah. and good. Yeah, so uh, sorry you don't get to see any of that. But it was beautiful. But, oh, yeah, absolutely gorgeous handmade quilts. Um, sorry, I can't show you. <laughs> we didn't eat at the buffet this time. Uh, buffet price was 17 bucks a person, and it was packed in there. It was. Uh, the parking lot's packed, but had our little outing. Yeah. And now we're going to go back to the trailer and have a little lunch and enjoy some Amish confectionaries. Hey. How come there's a bite missing from our little chocolate pie we just purchased? Cause I ate it. It was good. <laughs> clippy clappy, clippy clappy. You know, we're used to seeing horses in northern Utah, but not those Amish car carriers. Fortunately, with the road noise, you can't hear that horsey. Clippy clappy. It's been a busy morning. Uh, we spoke with John here at the service Service. Center. Center. It, it's morning. I need more coffee. And uh, got the trailer all ready. They're going to take it on in. And third time's a charm. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very nice people here. And uh, But now, let's head on back to northern Utah. I think the plan is that we're going to head straight to Council Bluffs, Iowa, spend the night there, and then possibly see a couple of natural, na national historic sites. Uh, there goes Greg's trailer. Met Greg last night. He pulled in. He's 
he's got some issues that they're going to take care of under warranty. Nice guy. Hi, Greg, if you're watching this. And anyways, we'll uh, we're leaving our home. I know it's weird, huh? I know it's it's weird. Where are we? I don't know. We're at the Herbert Hoover National, National Historic Site. I just do? don't know the town. Let's go in and get a patch and a pin. Check out the Herbert Hoover. I don't National. know the town. Um, we're uh, right outside of Iowa City. I know, but it's west. I thought it was oh, west. Oh, we're going to need masks. Yes, you're right. We're going to need masks because this is a federal building. Uh, it's upside down. I don't know. No, it's not. <laughs> so, other than knowing that the dam was named after Herbert Hoover, I really don't know much. I feel kind of guilty about that, him being the 31st president. Considering you're a history buff, I'm surprised. I know, I just, uh, I guess it's just never been a fascination, you know? But we just watched a video and learned that he was orphaned uh, pri prior to 10 years old. Yeah, lost and, both of his parents. And, uh, went to live with his uncle in Oregon. They sewed 20 cents into his pocket and? For spending money. And he traveled by train to see the uncle. And to, to he, live with the uncle. Right, so he could go to school. And also, he said that he, because of him being an orphan, that he really worked on feeding orphans and the poor and it's what began UNICEF so. yeah you know, I had no idea here's the schoolhouse that Herbert who went by Bert when he was younger attended and and they were Quakers I mean I had no idea interesting simple upbringing they mentioned in the movie that They'd go to a meeting and there would be no lesson. They would all just sit there quietly until somebody decided that... We're moved by the spirit. They were, yes. He it was, said it tried a 10 year old's patience to I, just sit. For hours. <laughs> quiet. I wonder how many mothers wrapped the back of their kid's head sitting in that <laughs> meeting. As they began to fidget. Basically... A, a little bedroom and and the main room doesn't say how many square feet this is but oh, where's the heat oh well, I don't know another bed out here and really not much of a kitchen I mean you got a ki kitchen I guess you'd bring the water in from that's it so the kitchen's separate. The stove. Such a much simpler life, really. Yeah, and we, uh, we probably have the same amount of square footage. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> of course, we have indoor plumbing. We do. They'll have to walk out here to the privy. I'm getting water. Of course, back then they didn't in the middle of the night either. They used a chamber pot. Oh. This building over here is the Herbert Hoover Presidential Library. Unfortunately, due to COVID, it's closed. So the Boy Scouts built this picnic shelter in 1953 as a tribute to Herbert Hoover due to his support of the various youth programs. On his 80th birthday, he gave a televised speech here at the West Branches Elementary School. Afterwards, he came here for the dedication uh, and a plaque honoring his life. So that's pretty cool. And here we have the final resting place of Herbert Hoover and his wife Lou who passed away 20 years before he did. Certainly a beautiful setting up here.
Well, I may have already mentioned this in the video, but the, here is the entrance to the Herbert Hoover Presidential Library and Museum, and unfortunately, it is closed due to COVID. Dang it. So here we are at the statue of Isis, the goddess of life. And this statue was presented to President Hoover by the Belgian people for his humanitarian aids uh, that took place during and after World War I. Really interesting. Sorry about the lawnmower. There's quite extensive grounds here. And uh, it was quite a walk walking over to the grave site from the visitor center. As a student of history, I found this very fascinating, probably because I knew very little about Herbert Hoover, except that Hoover Dam was named after him. So it says that the statue of Isis, Egyptian goddess of life, symbolizes Herbert Hoover's humanitarian efforts. Belgians gave Hoover, the bronze statue, to thank him for his help in staving off famine in their country in World War I. Hoover, a wealthy mining engineer, had given up his career to organize, without pay, a war relief organization. He persuaded German invaders and British blockaders to allow shipments of food that fed millions of people in Belgium and northern France during the war. After the war, Herbert Hoover directed his relief efforts across Europe. He devoted the rest of his life to public service. You know, it's interesting. I mean, it, it indicates here that he was a wealthy mining engineer. I didn't pay a lot of attention other than the fact that he'd received a degree in mining and geology. Don't know how he made that wealth. Uh, that specific wealth. Having grown up an orphan, from such a young age. They positioned Isis specifically to face the cottage where President Hoover was born, right there. Hey Ange, what did you think of the uh, Herbert Hoover Presidential Historic Site slash museum slash presidential library? Uh, well, it would be nice to be able to go to the museum and the library, but it was a good little walk. I'm glad it's not any warmer than it is, or it would be too warm. Yeah, they said on the radio it was supposed to be in the 90s. I don't think it's in the 90s. There is a little bit of a cool breeze. Right. But it, it, there's there's the humidity in the air that yeah. we're not used to. Yeah. So it's a, so it's a little sweaty. I I see a little bit of a gleam of perspiration on your brow. Yeah. And it was a good walk. I mean, she, she mentioned to us in the visitor center that you could, of course, drive over to the the museum and park. Yeah, there save was, on the hike, but yeah, there was a couple places to park. But it was a fun, it was a nice little walk yeah, and, and it was. to see the ground. So, all right. Well, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and follow Angie, Jazz, and I on our journey. Thanks for watching. In our next video, we visit the Homestead National Historical Park. The cutouts represent proportionally the amount of land within the state that was homesteaded. Until then, we'll see you down the road.